The Detroit Lions have had a very disappointing 21st century, to say the least, not winning a single playoff game. That is, until 2023 came along. The Detroit Lions went from having a 3-13-1 record to being one of the NFC's most intimidating teams only two short years later. They even won their first playoff game in 22 years in the 2023-24 season. Yes, players like Jared Goff, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Aiden Hutchinson deserve heaps of credit for the Lions' success, but nobody deserves more credit for the turnaround of this franchise than their head coach, Dan Campbell. Since taking over as the Lions head coach in 2021, he has led Detroit to their first playoff appearance since 2016, their first playoff win since 1992, and has completely turned the Detroit Lions franchise around. But how did he get here? How did the Lions find their head coach of the future? In this video, we'll be going over Dan Campbell's journey to becoming the face of Detroit Lions football. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you'll never miss a video like this one. Dan Campbell was born on April 13, 1976 in Clifton, Texas. Growing up, Dan was a massive football fan, cheering on the Dallas Cowboys on Sundays. Former Cowboys running back Tony Dorsett was Dan's favorite player, which makes complete sense considering how electric Dorsett and his speed were on a football field. Dorsett and the Cowboys gave Dan Campbell the inspiration to pursue football as a child. Dan would play football through his childhood and all the way through high school, where he would play both running back and tight end at Glen Rose High School. Dan impressed so much at Glen Rose that he would receive many D1 offers, including the two largest schools in his home state, Texas and Texas A&M. The story of how he chose where to ultimately commit to is a funny one. Dan grew up in a house basically in the middle of nowhere, and his father was very big into farming and raising cattle. So when a Texas recruiter showed up at Dan's house to convince him to play for the Longhorns, mixed up his cattle, calling one of Dan's goats a black deer, Dan and his father were immediately turned off by Texas. However, when Texas A&M recruiter R.C. Slocum came to recruit Dan to the Aggies, he did not make the mistake of mixing up a goat with a deer, instead telling Dan's father, these are some pretty goats you have here. This seemingly minimal exchange is ultimately the reason Dan chose to commit to playing football as a Texas A&M Aggie. Campbell would only see the ball once in his freshman season at Texas A&M, returning a kick for 10 yards. But in his sophomore year, the same year that Texas A&M would make a move from the Southwest Conference to the Big 12, Campbell would see his first action as a college football player. Campbell would mostly be used as a blocking tight end, only catching eight passes for 103 yards in his sophomore season. This trend would continue throughout the rest of his college career, as fellow tight end Derek Spiller would get the heap of the receiving work in the tight end room. Dan's junior and senior seasons would consist of 19 catches for 201 yards and three touchdowns, giving him a college total of 27 catches for 304 yards and three touchdowns. However, his work as a blocker was so exceptional that Campbell was a lock to be drafted in the 1999 NFL Draft, and that he was. Campbell was drafted in the third round with the 79th pick by the New York Giants. Campbell didn't see much playing time his rookie season, much like his freshman season at Texas A&M. And much like his sophomore season, Campbell eased his way into the Giants' game plan in his second year as a pro, even starting four games for the eventual NFC champion Giants. Campbell would record his first three NFL touchdowns this season and would even play in his first and only Super Bowl, ultimately being taken down by the team that many say had the greatest defense in the history of the NFL, the 2000-2001 Baltimore Ravens. Before the 2001 season, Campbell had taken over as the Giants' starting tight end, despite continuing to be mostly used as a blocker. After two seasons as the Giants' starting tight end, where he would record 35 catches for 323 yards and two touchdowns over these two seasons, Campbell would hit free agency, where he would eventually sign with the division rival Dallas Cowboys. Campbell's first season in Dallas went about the same as his last two in New York, catching 20 passes for 195 yards and a touchdown. However, in 2004, his second season as a Cowboy, he would only play three games before tearing ligaments in his foot, placing him on the injured reserve list and ending his season. 
In his absence, a young tight end by the name of Jason Witten had taken his place, and the Cowboys never looked back. Campbell would return in 2005 as the Cowboys' backup tight end, only catching three passes for 24 yards and a touchdown, eventually entering free agency in the offseason. Campbell would eventually sign with, yes, the Detroit Lions. Ironically enough, Campbell would have a career year in his first season as a Lion, catching 21 passes for 308 yards and a team leading four touchdowns in only 11 starts. Unfortunately, very shortly into his next two seasons, Campbell would be placed on the injured reserve, ending his next two seasons and ultimately ending his playing career. He would sign with the New Orleans Saints in 2009, but would never play a snap, putting his total career numbers at a solid 91 receptions for 934 yards and 11 touchdowns. It didn't take long after his retirement to venture into the coaching realm, joining the Miami Dolphins as a coaching intern in 2010. That would only last one season, as Campbell proved himself enough to be named the Dolphins' tight ends coach in 2011, a job he would have for over three seasons. During the 2015 season, Campbell would be given the opportunity of a lifetime, being named the interim head coach after Miami's head coach at the time, Joe Philbin, would be fired after a 1-3 start to the season. Campbell would go on to lead Ryan Tannehill and the Miami Dolphins to a 6-10 final record, going 5-7 as the Dolphins' interim head coach. After his coaching performance in Miami, New Orleans Saints head coach and Campbell's former coach, Sean Payton, was so impressed with Campbell that he would bring him in as not only the Saints' tight ends coach, but also as the assistant head coach, being taken under Payton's wing. Campbell would spend the next five seasons under Sean Payton in New Orleans, taking in as much knowledge as possible and helping New Orleans stay competitive for a long time. In his last couple of seasons in New Orleans, he was starting to make a lot of noise in the head coaching scene, making himself a candidate for multiple years. Finally, in 2021, the Detroit Lions would take a chance on Campbell, signing him to be their head coach after firing Robert Prince in the offseason. It was clear from Campbell's introductory press conference that things were going to be different in Detroit when Campbell would go on to say multiple inspiring things like, we're going to bite a kneecap off making Lions fans fall in love with him before the first whistle of the season even blew. Hiring Dan Campbell wasn't the only significant thing the Lions did in the 2021 offseason. They traded longtime franchise quarterback and undeniably the greatest Lions quarterback of all time, Matt Stafford, to the Los Angeles Rams in exchange for quarterback Jared Goff and multiple first-round picks. It was clear that Detroit would be completely flipping their franchise around. Unfortunately, the new-look Lions would not start off great, as Campbell, Goff, and the Lions would start off 2021 with a 0-10-1 record. Many Lions fans had lost hope, begging the front office to send the team into a full rebuild. But Campbell assured everybody that the Lions would be just fine, and just fine they were. In Week 13 against the Minnesota Vikings, the Lions would get their first win of the season as Jared Goff threw a walk-off touchdown pass to rookie Amon Ra St. Brown. Detroit would finish the season with a 3-13-1 record. However, Campbell had completely won over not just the fans, but the Detroit Lions franchise, as they would sign him to a six-year, $40 million contract extension, locking him up as the head coach of the future. The 2022 season started off the same way 2021 did, very poorly, as they would start off 1-6. However, the Lions would have a major mid-season turnaround, winning 8 of their next 10 games and finishing the season with a 9-8 record, just barely missing the playoffs. However, this sniff of success is exactly what the Lions needed, as they would head into the 2023 season as the odds-on favorites to win the NFC North. And that's exactly what they would go on to do. Detroit would finish 12-5, tying the franchise record in wins and securing the three seed, making the playoffs for the first time in seven years. It was clear at this point that Dan Campbell had completely flipped the lines around and cemented himself as one of the best head coaches in the NFL. In a poetic turn of events, the Lions would go on to face Matt Stafford and the Los Angeles Rams in the wildcard round. The Lions facing the greatest quarterback to ever play for them while starting the quarterback that was traded for him led to the weekend's biggest storyline. And it did not disappoint. In a back-and-forth game, Campbell, Goff, and the Detroit Lions would ultimately come out with a 24-23 win, 
their first playoff win in 22 years. They beat Stafford. They got rid of the ghost of Lions past, cementing themselves as contenders in the NFC that teams need to be scared of, all thanks to Dan Campbell. How do you think the rest of Dan Campbell's tenure in the Motor City will go? Do you think he will lead the Lions to a Super Bowl victory? Let us know in the comments. Since you made it this far, could you become a subscriber to our channel? You would be a helper by doing so. We're working hard to bring you stories of the game's best stories. As always, thank you for watching The Halftime Show. See you all in the next one.